Uh, this particular field has very obvious uh, symptoms of mite feeding. And what we're going to do is just take a look through here and do a brief demonstration of how to confirm the presence of uh, two spotted spider mites in a field. Really the only materials you need are a sheet of white paper and a hand lens. Mite damage is usually first evident on the edges of the field and it uh, takes a characteristic bronzing color uh, as you can see around me here. Uh, a lot of these plants will not come back from this level of, of damage. Uh, that's the first clue. The second thing to do is to enter the field and confirm that it's mites and not some other combination of stresses. Of course, many things will make uh, soybean foliage turn off colors, brown and yellow, uh, but mites have this very specific bronzing color. So to confirm that there are mites, all you do is lay a, a sheet of white paper or a white cloth or handkerchief down under some soybean plants and just take the plants bend them over the paper, just shake them, kind of bang them on that, on that sheet of white paper. And then what you'll see, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of two-spotted spider mites. They, they appear as little orangey specks, uh, brownish orange specks moving around on that white sheet of paper. If you happen to have a hand lens, you can easily confirm that they're mites uh, just by zooming in on some of them. And you'll see the characteristic uh, two spots, uh, uh, two dark spots on the abdomen, and the rest of the mite is usually a uh, um, orangey yellow color. So when mites get into areas where their populations are exploding, they move through the field. And they do that two ways. Number one is walking uh, from plant to plant, especially where plants and leaves are touching. Uh, but the second way is a longer distance travel, which is called ballooning. Um, what they do is crawl to a higher point on the plant and put some silk out of their abdomen, kind of like spider webbing, and that then catches a breeze. They let go of whatever, whatever piece of the plant they're on, and they just follow, and they're carried by the prevailing wind somewhere else. This area, only a few feet from the border, uh, we're not seeing any evidence of uh, two-spotted spider mites. That doesn't mean they can't colonize this area, but it does mean that um, these beans have some time uh, to wait for a rain. So this is the way you would determine the edge of the infestation. Let's say your, your spray boom is 100 feet long and you're thinking of spraying just the border. You'd want to move in at least 100 feet, uh, possibly more, to assess what is the range of that infestation. Where is the edge? And what it does, uh, that kind of treatment just buys you some time, uh, if, especially if there's no rain in the forecast. This is, we said many times the best thing that can happen in terms of mite infestations is a good rain because then these soybeans can start to physiologically get back to normal, not be stressed, and mites just can't colonize them uh, the way they can when, when the soybeans are dry. Uh, there are many options that are labeled for mite control in soybeans, and not all of them uh, work equally well. Uh, we tend to recommend the producers stay away from pyrethroid insecticides, which are the insecticides they use for most of their other uh, pest management in insects, and lean more toward uh, chlorpyrifos, which is also called Lorsban, and there are many generic versions available, and dimethoate. Those provide the best control of uh, mite populations and, and offer the most net benefit to the producer in terms of longer-term management of mites.